Okay, so what I will try to do in the last talk of this session is to give you a little bit more of an overview. We've already talked about how do these measures relate to each other, and I'll show you a little bit of data regarding um, this question. And I would like to um, push the discussion a little bit further about the opportunities and the challenges that we are facing. So um, I'm looking at this task from a psychologist's um, point of view, because I am a psychologist. And as a psychologist, we, we do measure all sorts of strange things that you can't see. So for example, ex intelligence. So I'm quite certain that you'll notice when there is a lack of intelligence, right? But could you sharply define intelligence that you can measure it? So that's a really difficult task. And lots of scientists did so, and uh, so lots of measures occurred as we have the problem now, or the challenge, or the wealth. And uh, there was Dr. Boring who said quite pragmatically, so intelligence is what an intelligence test measures. And it could actually be us today saying, okay, vaccine hesitancy is what a vaccine hesitancy scale measures. But there are a lot of interesting things in this uh, very little sentence. Um, so vaccine hesitancy obviously is something, so it's worthwhile to look again at definitions. Um, it, it contains the word measure, so I would just only briefly touch upon what it means to measure because uh, Dilla has um, done so already. Um, there are obviously scales, so I'll do a bit of a brief overview of scales. And um, it is important to um, have an idea about what they actually measure, what they predict. So this is basically what um, I'm going to do over the next uh, 20 minutes. So if we start with definitions, um, I collected <coughs> some of the definitions from the literature. Let me see how it works. Is this the correct one? Yes. So um, I think we could think of vaccine hesitancy as something like the roof. Um, it's like the roof concept um, that has been uh, defined already by Dilla, and it contains uh, psychological uh, constructs such as confidence, complacency, maybe also convenience um, as um, psychological constructs as things <coughs> people think and feel about vaccination. And there is the increasingly used term vaccine demand, which is, um, which is like the willpower. People really request vaccination, which should be supported by um, governments or programs. Um, and finally, there is vaccine acceptance, which is the final behavior. So this is just to, um, at least for this talk, uh, get the definitions uh, straight. Uh, Dylan has already said that there is this 3C model of vaccine hesitancy, which has confidence, convenience, and complacency in it. And I think we've talked enough about these concepts, so I don't go into more detail. I just uh, would like to refer you to the convenience factor because um, we kind of renamed it as a constraint factor because convenience is something we always felt and there, is, there has also been a debate. Um, Julie was also involved in it that this is something where we blame people so they are too convenient to get vaccinated, but actually it's a, it's a matter of constraints in the environment. And um, looking at this factor is something like looking at the barriers in people's heads that result from the barriers around the people. So this uh, 3C model is quite established in the literature and also an outcome of the SAGE working group efforts. And um, we did some more work looking at also literature and our experience in experimental work, finding that there was, were some Cs missing and we added some more factors. One was collective responsibility because we noted in our work that um, people care for others, of course, and if we tell people that vaccines have a social impact as well because of herd immunity, this matters to people, but people differ in this. So this um, factor is looking at um, the question, do people care for protecting others or would they like to free ride on a well vaccinated society? And then there is always the question, do people actually want information or would they, are they fine with the recommendation? And this is um, looked at in the factor of calculation. So do people want extensive information search? 
and we're looking at these five C as um, psychological antecedents of vaccination. So this is something that happens in people's heads, which is a re reflection of the environment they live in. And um, we can, we, we're trying to measure these um, antecedents to predict whether they would decide for or against vaccination. So looking at this is looking at vaccine hesitancy or vaccine confidence um, in an individual manner and, and uh, on a um, level of a mental representation. And Charles already showed an overview of all the measures available. And I just brought it again here to, because I promised the screening of the market. And if you're wondering about the format and why there are so logos on it, it's, this is part of a card deck we developed for a summer school at WHO Euro, Katrina Habersat, and uh, University of Erfurt, my university, uh, that we did together. And we developed this as a kind of a handout for the participants to take home. And it gives an overview of um, a large set of available scales. And I would just briefly like to walk you through some of the scales um, to show you where these scales are similar, where they differ, and how you could possibly make a decision which scale to use. So we've heard about the vaccine hesitancy scale. I'll drop that. So one scale that you have mentioned, Philip, was the pa PACV. I think that's how you most of you pronounce it, the parental attitudes toward vaccination scale. It has 15 items and it measures the construct of confidence with three subscales, <coughs> like the believe, uh, uh, the um, um, attitude and the risks uh, scale in Jilla's paper. So it pertains mainly to childhood vaccination and um, has been, I think it's the oldest scale, so it's been used in lots of different um, works and it also pred predicted actual behavior. Then there is the vaccine confidence scale, which was developed to have a scale also to look at teenager vaccination. And it also measures confidence. It has eight items that are um, clustered together in three subscales, benefits, trusts, and harms. Then there is another scale, which is the Global Vaccine Confidence Index. It bases on uh, Heidi Larson's work also with the SAGE um, working group. And this is a very <coughs> short scale. It's uh, four items. It has uh, no, re not really subscales. It just, uh, it measures whether people think vaccination is safe, effective, important, and compatible to religious um, beliefs. So this is a very short measure and I'll show you in a minute what it is used for. And this touches upon confidence and complacency. And I would like to introduce you a scale that has been mentioned before by Charles. It's the 5C psych psychological antecedents of vaccination, which we have currently <coughs> developed and it's um, currently under review. And this scale touches upon all the five C's as you could guess from the name of the scale. So it has items measuring confidence such as I'm completely confident that vaccines are safe. It measures constraints, um, like everyday stress prevents me from getting vaccinated, or it's, um, it takes a lot of effort to get vaccinated for me. It has complacency in it. Vaccination is unnecessary because vaccine preventable diseases are not common anymore. It has a uh, calculation. Um, when I think about getting vaccinated, I weigh benefits and risks to make the de best decision possible. And finally, collective responsibility, which is a reverse co uh, coded item here. When everyone is vaccinated, I don't have to get vaccinated too. So this is like the free riding aspect. This scale has a short and a long version. Just as Angus said, sometimes it's useful to have like a really short measure, to, for example, for a monitoring pur purpose. And sometimes you would like to prefer the more valid um, or reliable version of it, which where you actually need more items to, to achieve this. So that this is why this uh, scale has a short and a long version. And you, what you see here is the short version. And um, this scale is um, not 
directed to childhood vaccination or something in particular, but vaccination in general. So if we look at all these scales on a, in a grid, um, so these are the scales and these are the um, potential uh, things that could be measured, we see that all of the scales that exist measure confidence. And um, some of the scales measure different constructs and only one scale measures the compatibility with religious beliefs. So I'll come back to that later. So now the question already came up, um, how do the measures relate to each other? So we did, us, um, we did a data collection uh, with an, a US sample <coughs> and we collected from the same participants data on all scales. And we correlated the scales with each other. And what you can see here in the uh, orange triangle is that all measures that measure confidence, I'm just going back here. So all these measures um, correlate quite highly with each other, 0 0.7, 0 0.8 and higher. So if you want to choose a, ch uh, a scale that measures confidence, you just pick one, they measure similar things. So it depends on what kind of uh, subject pool you're looking at. Are you looking at childhood vaccines or parents or vaccination in general? So um, you might want to focus your decision on this um, aspect because more or less these scales measure more or less um, the same. I think what is interesting is if you look at the total scores here, you see that they come, uh, they come out as a very different level. So this is between 65 and 80 percent of the maximum scale value. So, um, um, so I think we need to learn more about uh, what, what it means um, to have high or low values on any particular scale. And it's important not just to look at the mean values, but really to look at the, um, to look at the question how they predict actual vaccine uptake and vaccine decisions. So if we look at confidence, they are pretty much um, related to each other. So, um, so <laughs> is there a difference between the scales? Um, so if we look at um, how well do the measures predict vaccination status, we, we used the same sample and we asked um, the parents, so is your child vaccinated against measles? Is it vaccinated against HPV? Always depending on how old the children were and um, regarding own flu uptake. And I think the basic message here is the broader the measure, the broader is um, the amount of, or the higher is the amount of explained variants. So for measles, for example, we could explain 40% uh, of the variance in measles uptake with, for example, the 5C scale and 30% with measures that look only look at vaccine confidence. The same was with uh, HPV uptake. The 5C measure um, explained 35% um, of the variance and measures that looked only at vaccine confidence um, predicted um, or explained a little bit less variance. What you can see here as well is that the amount of variance that is explained by the measures varies dramatically between the vaccines. So <laughs> we all, you know, if you look at this vaccine confidence definition, it varies by vaccine and context, etc. This is really, really true. And it's also true that the um, antecedents, the factors that influence vaccine uptake differ from vaccine to vaccine. And this, um, we see this here really nicely in, this, in, this, uh, in these data. So what can we do um, when we have such measures? What, what is done actually with the Global Vaccine Confidence Index from Heidi Larson is that there is a website and there is a regular monitoring. I think it's been done twice, 67 countries are screened on these uh, four questions and you at the vaccine confidence <coughs> website you can access the current state of vaccine confidence. So that's the monitoring um, aspect. <coughs> and of course, um, I think it has also been mentioned, the JRF, the joint reporting form from WHO requests countries to report about the status of vaccine hesitancy in their countries. 
And there has been a recent article that says that only 30% of the countries report vaccine hesitancy based on any data. So I think this is a real challenge, but a huge opportunity as well. Um, if we find an agreed upon measure, it doesn't have to be the 5C, of course, but we need one. And um, so we will uh, need to, to think about how we, how we reach um, this decision and what kind of measure can be used to assess vaccine um, hesitancy, confidence, the antecedents, whatever you want to na name it. Um, but to make it measurable across countries and um, to have a reliable indicator. I think another opportunity is to use these kind of scales in intervention planning. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about a project that we have in uh, Erfurt at my university. Um, it's a project on increasing knowledge and uptake uh, regarding influenza and pneumococcal vaccine in the 60 plus generation. Um, and we measured actually the antecedents of vaccination with uh, the 5C measure. And we did some more also qualitative research, but we used the 5C data to create an intervention because what we found is we related um, the 5C to um, previous uptakes, so what the people told us. Uh, and we found confidence was a predictor, complacency, collective responsibility, and calculation. So nearly all of the five factors was, were um, significant predictors. So the thinking behind is if we change something in the predictors, it will finally change vaccine uptake. So we developed an intervention where we um, addressed confidence. Well, in the first place, we, I say calculation was high, so people wanted information. They said, I really want to be informed. So we decided to make an information campaign um, addressing confidence, uh, where we address misinformation, for example. We address complacency. People thought influenza w wasn't really severe for them, but they're over 60, so it is. So we decided to explain um, the risk of um, increased, uh, the increased risk for sepsis after infections, and this seems to work quite well. So connecting vaccination with, or preventing vaccine, um, vaccine preventable diseases by connecting it to risks that people already feel that they, they are. So, okay, th this was a really scrambled sentence, but I hope you understood <laughs> what I mean. So connecting, um, to connect um, the disease with the risk that they already perceive. So that was actually the message. So we addressed complacency by this. We had a simulation and information about herd immunity because people felt it was really important. And um, so this was um, the basic interventions and we measured the 5C before the intervention. We measured it afterwards and now we have a second wave we, where we do it again. What we saw is that the 5C actually didn't really change, but what we saw is that vaccine uptake, at least the self-reported uptake, um, increased. So we had a 30% a increase of influenza, self-reported vaccine in, um, uptake, and an 11% uh, pneumococcal vaccine um, uptake increase. So this is an opportunity how to use these measures um, for intervention planning. I would like to address one challenge that Charles already um, mentioned, um, which is the cultural context. We've developed the measure based on data of Germany and the US, and we would just piloted the approach that Charles proposed uh, for the Vax Africa project in a small study in Nigeria, just 255 pregnant women who um, filled in the questionnaire and some other questions in several health uh, facilities in Nigeria. And what we found is that confidence indeed was related in this case just to MMR. We had several other vaccines as well, but I just got the data on Friday and I wanted it to make it comparable to other data that I presented here. So um, there seems to be a confidence is a predictor of the MMR uh, previous uptake, and if we take a compatibility with religious beliefs in it, we see that um, we explain more variants, 
and that we maybe maybe that in different contexts we have to also look at different factors so taking compatibility with religious practice um, into account seems to be uh, useful in this particular context so um, it's interesting, um, in, a, in a US sample, we had a much higher explained variance regarding measles vaccine, and we also had different factors explaining vaccine uptake. So again, uh, there seems to be a strong impact of context, and um, there is lots of variance unexplained. So uh, we're also conducting focus groups, um, just, uh, we're just piloting this um, to see if we're missing on something, if it's not only this five or six factors, maybe it's something totally different. And also the questions that were posed um, before, so what does it mean to adapt it to a different culture? This, these are very important questions and very difficult to solve, probably especially for us, not being in the context, but the PhD student here, he's from uh, Nigeria, so he's um, now diving deeper into this, um, these questions. To sum up, um, there are various measures, and uh, lots of them measure vaccine, or m all of them measure vaccine confidence. But uh, confidence might not always be the issue. Having looked at the several data sets, I can say confidence is very often a significant predictor, but it's not the only significant predictor. And I think it's really important to look at all, also look at the other um, variables, at least as a screening tool. It's not like a final answer. You, mo you will not know how your intervention has to look like if you do a short screening, but you, you really know where to dig a little bit deeper. And um, so the challenges, I think, are that we still don't know everything about the scales. Um, they might miss important issues. There might be cultural differences that we don't get from uh, from the scales or what that might produce some noise and we'll just get meaningless results because we don't know about anything about the cultural adaptation of the work. Um, so I think the opportunities are to, to monitor um, vaccine hesitancy over time, over countries, and use it for intervention planning and evaluation. And actually my vision would be um, to have an online hub for sharing data, not like top down, I collect data from the whole world, but researchers from the world using the same scales, putting the data together and um, potentially the, some C related scales or other scales, putting the data together so we can make it comparable, publish it online and we can access the data from everywhere and th this will really dramatically increase um, the comparis comparability of data. It will allow to synthesize data. It will facilitate uh, diagnosis and intervention planning and evaluation. So thank you for your attention and thank you team. <laughs> <laughs>